Oh my gosh. That is big. Mm -hmm. So what do we got here? So right here is our buddy Thor. And Thor, Thor is a reticulated python. Reticulated pythons are native to the rainforest of Southeast Asia in particular. In areas like Thailand, Laos, uh, Burma, Myanmar at this point in time, we would call that. Uh, Vietnam. So these guys are kind of found in a lot of regions, most of Southeast Asia in general. So, and reticulated pythons are pretty amazing snakes for a good particular amount of reasons. One, these guys are actually the longest snake on planet Earth. Wow. So Thor is still kind of relatively small and young. He's only five years old. Okay. And he's just around 12 feet in length. At full pretty size, small. yeah, pretty small. Full size, a male like Thor can get to be about 16 to 18 feet in length most wow. of the time. Now, their female counterparts, those guys are the true giants. A female reticulated python will get about two-thirds the size larger than a male. So and the record breaker was actually almost a 30-footer that was housed in a zoo here in North America. Now, that's funny because in a zoo in North Korea, uh -huh. They actually have one on display, but unfortunately scientists haven't had a chance to measure it at this point in time. And they say it's 35 feet in length, and she's an old oh female that's lived there. So. Now how long do these things live? These guys are pretty long-lived reptiles yeah. in general. Large constrictors, especially boas and pythons, yeah. the biggest species of snake, they can live for about 35 to 40 years in captivity. They have a relatively pretty long lifespan. Yeah. So most of the time it's the females that are living longer than the males. That's okay. why they get to those exponentially larger That's what I was going to ask. Okay. So large constrictors, they are the apex predators in those rainforest ecosystems yeah. for a lot of reasons. Sands their size just being so big, these guys can take down prey as large as small primates, small wild boar, and even small deer in that area of the rainforest of Southeast Asia where they're found. So these guys are well equipped to actually take down extremely yeah, large prey well. animals in general. And these guys are well adapted for blending in for the rainforest. If you take a look, on the outside of their scales, they almost kind of have that iridescent shine physically that allows them to actually kind of copy the rainforest floor itself when they're large like this. If you guys have ever kind of seen a rainforest ecosystem in your lifetime, as the sun breaks through the canopy, most of the time it starts to glisten because of all the water that's already built up on the bottom of the forest yeah. floor. So that iridescence actually allows this animal to kind of remain very well hidden or camouflaged with that rainforest ecosystem. And these are not venomous, obviously. They solely constrict their yeah. prey. Large constrictors like pythons and boas, they rely on their size and their strength to take down their prey. Yeah. So these guys will sit and wait, being ambush predators, okay. so their prey kind of gets close to them. Then they strike out at 75 miles per hour, oh my God. grabbing that prey item with their sharp front teeth, which are recurved backwards. So kind of like allows stop. them, yeah, kind of allows them to hook into the prey and physically drag it into the coils of their body. Then, like boas, pythons, being constrictors, they squeeze their prey until eventually, what we know now, which we used to think was kind of a brutal process, actually really isn't too bad. They just kind of gently squeeze every time the prey takes a breath. When that happens, it constricts the airway, so over time, they can no longer take in oxygen and eventually their heart just slowly stops, so. This is kind of gentle, actually. Slightly, yeah. More than you'd think. More than you'd think. It's yeah. not really a violent process like people used to think with constriction. Yeah. They used to think you're literally just suffocating. <laughs> That's what I've always like right, envisioned. Right? I'm like, oh, man. Yeah, but it's not as harsh as we believe, so. Wow. Now, how long have you been doing Buffalo Animal Adventures? Uh, as an organization, we've been around now for just about seven years. Okay. We're coming up uh, this coming year in October will be our seventh year anniversary. Nice. And we've been doing wildlife education now here uh, in Western New York for at least the past six and a half out of those seven years. Okay. And I mean, we have highly trained educators and zoo staff that work with our animals and our wildlife and go out. And the mainstay, like we say, of our programming is the importance of taking it to the next generation, especially when it comes to students and children of the younger age, to kind of learn about the importance of wildlife and yeah. biology in general. So That's awesome. And you yourself have been working with animals for longer than that? Oh, yes. Yeah. This, <laughs> this will be now going on almost 18 years of my life with working with regulated wildlife species here in New York State. Uh, I started... At actually the young age of 15 years old wow okay and worked mostly with regulated reptile species like these guys the okay. large constrictors 
uh, crocodilians, venomous snakes, and trained and got my education here in Western New York, also at Canisius College. Nice. And then went on to do my master's in secondary education in biology, and this is where we are today with Buffalo Animal Adventure. So. Very cool. We really appreciate you coming out. Mm-hmm.